Hi, welcome. It's Professor Murray, and this is Lesson 8 of Project Management. Today I'm going to talk about costing, and there's actually three parts to it, three that we're going to focus on. Estimating, budgeting, and controlling are the three parts that we're going to focus on. In this video, I'm going to talk about the first two, estimating and budgeting, and then in another video, I'll talk about cost control, controlling costs. Let's look at these three words and what they mean. Estimating is determining how much every part of the project will cost. Budgeting then is taking the estimate and turning that into an amount that's authorized or amount that's allocated for each task. So they're very similar, but they're a little bit different. I'm going to get into that. And then for Cost control, we're going to talk about that in another video. And cost, by the way, is the actual money that's spent. Budget is the amount of money that's allocated to be spent. For estimating, there's three basic steps. First, you estimate the cost of every task that you have in your work breakdown structure. You can do that by sometimes getting quotes from vendors Sometimes you have historical data that you can rely on. There might be expert opinion. Uh, for example, if someone has done many similar projects, they will have a pretty good idea of how much the different components of each new project might cost. And lastly, there's just giving it your best guess. And sometimes we have to do that. Okay, so we estimate the cost of every task then we have to evaluate how accurate we feel our estimate is. And based on that, sometimes we need to make some adjustments. Let's look at a simple example. This project has only three components, three tasks. We're going to purchase a mill, we're going to rent a forklift, and we're going to do some training. Now I've got three kinds of estimates on this. I have a quote from the vendor for the mill itself. And that quote is a firm price of $11,795. For renting the forklift, I've got historical data on what it costs to rent a forklift. And then for training, I don't really have good information, but I'm going to take a guess at $500. Okay, I have three components. I have different quality of estimate information on those three. The next step is I evaluate how accurate my estimates are. For the first two, I think they're really good. Uh, I've got a quote for the machine and I know how much it costs to rent a forklift because we do that frequently. The training, I don't have good confidence on that. It's, a, it's just a guess, so I put low confidence. So let's look at what we do with those. I've got my expanded graph here and over on the right I've got my adjusted price. So for the mill I've got a quote. I know that that's a firm price and so I'm not going to adjust that. I'm going to just plug in my 11,795. Same with the historical data on the forklift. I'm going to plug in $200. Now for my training what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the low price or the low cost, what I think the lowest could be. So I think it could be as low as $200. It could be as high as $600. And what I expect is it's going to be $500. Now there's two ways I can handle these uh, parameters. I can just do a simple average. And down here, if you notice, I've calculated the average and I've got $433. But I don't want to do that because I expect the price to be 500, so that's where I think it needs to be. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a weighted average. I'm gonna put more weight on my $500 estimate and less on the high and low range. So to do that, I just take four times my expected and add in my low and my high, and I divide by six. And that comes up with a estimate of 466. And I think that's a little better than the 433. 
So I'm going to plug in $466. I think that's a, a better estimate. All right, let's look at what that did for me. I started out with an estimate of $12,495. I made some adjustments and I came up with $12,461. Those numbers are not very different, but that's my, that's my homework. I've done my estimating. Now let's look at budgeting. In this example, we'll take that same estimate. So I've got my, I've got my mill, my forklift rental, my training, and here's all my backup information, my adjusted estimates. Now for my budget, I'll add a column here. And these bottom two are real simple. The forklift rental, I'm just going to carry that across $200. That's my budget. That's how much I'm going to authorize the project to spend on the forklift rental. Training, though, I'm going to make another adjustment because I see the estimate here. I've got these three numbers, and the estimate came up with 466. But I know that training has been in increasing demand lately. I think maybe I should just put a little bit more money into that. I'm going to go with this high estimate and plug in $600 in my budget. Purchase in the mill, I've got $11,795 and I've got a quote on that. So that should be good. I should know how much that's going to cost. But there's some other things I want to consider. If you look down at the bottom here, I've got my quote for $11,795. I'm going to put in some escalation reason I want escalation is the quote is good for 30 days, but I know we won't be buying this material for probably a year, and I think prices are going to go up. So I'm going to add in 5% for escalation. I'm going to add 8% to buy spare parts for maintenance, and then I'm going to stick in a 10% contingency just in case something goes different with it. Now I've got a total of 14,508, and I'm going to plug in 14,500. So that's going to be my budget amount. It's not my estimate. I estimated that the cost is going to be 11,795 for just the machine. Once I add in escalation, spare parts, and contingency, I'm going to budget 14,500. I think that's a, a better number. I have my overall budget, add these guys up, I've got 15,300. And notice a couple things. One is that's quite a bit more than my previous, my estimates. And it also makes you wonder, well, why did I go through all the work to adjust my estimates? Because I didn't really use that fine information. I, I kind of looked at it and came up with my own opinion of what the budget should be. We're going to go back and use that type of information later on when we're tracking the costs. If our costs are significantly different from our budget, we want to go back and find out what went wrong or what went different and why our budget and our costs are different. Someone did all this work coming up with low, expected, and high, and they weighted these numbers and came up with a best estimate and we didn't use that information, but that doesn't mean that the information is wasted. We're going to go back and revisit that. In summary, the estimate is a detailed information, detailed explanation of how much the project is expected to cost for each item. The methodology is recorded and explained so you know that for some things you had quotes, for other things they are best guesses, you know what your level of confidence was in each of those numbers. So it contains all the details. The budget on the other hand, it's based on the estimate, but it's also adjusted for external factors. One more thing, and this is something that people use this term incorrectly very frequently. And that is, what is the meaning of budget? One thing that people tend to confuse, especially if you watch reality TV shows where they're doing construction jobs, 
just because your costs change or cost goes up or cost goes down, that doesn't change your budget. Your budget is how much was allocated to do the job and your costs might be different than that. But again, because your cost goes up, it doesn't make your budget go up. Your budget is how much you're allowed to spend. Okay, thank you.